Uh, I did play some Bison earlier. So I probably talked a little bit about him as we went. Um, I, I personally consider that like this is where an obscene amount of power budget lies because it does 9 damage, which is a lot. Uh, and it might look like it costs 4 gauge. In my experience, it doesn't because you have this boost over here. Now, Headstomp is really good, just overall high value attack. If you can. So, like, I want to use Unstoppable to set up Psycho Punisher. I want to use Psycho Power to set up Headstomp. Because Headstomp costs way less gauge than either of his Ultras. So, I can just get a plus 5 power speed 6 attack with 6 normal power. So, it's like, what, 11? Yeah, 11 at speed 6. Good luck. You know, what are you going to do about that? Uh, or I can throw some Assault Skull Diver in the mix for an Ignore Armor option, which is actually super, super relevant. So, in terms of, like, importance to game plan, these three cards are 100% essential in my book. This for, the, this for the damage, although occasionally he needs the boost against Zoners, because he sucks against Zoners otherwise. Uh, this for the boost, and then the attack when you aren't going to throw an Ultra. Uh, this for the attack. The boost is nice, but the boost is a tool. It is a specific thing where it's like, ah, they have exactly one answer that can deal with my thing, get rid of it, and then I strike with the thing that I'm threatening. Or not the thing that I'm threatening, as the case may be. It's good for mind games as well. Uh, all this other stuff, like, Psycho Power is very good, but it's only as good as the stuff you use to make sure that it actually confirms. So, you know, plus five power, very good, but you want an above corruption or an EX above corruption so that you can stuff the cross when they initiate after you play this. Uh, or you want to be able to throw ignore armor at close range so that they get, don't just block your payout or whatever. It's like, uh, oh, and as for this attack, I don't value it, like at all. It's dive that is not strictly worse dive. And it's got a neat little image of like, oh, I guess he's kind of jumping forward and then bouncing back. I'm not sure what's happening. I haven't actually seen the source material on this one. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a safe ranged move that he can use if he really wants to. I think it's always worse than just boosting this once you have the gauge built up for it. Eh, you know, it's there if he needs it. Double reverse, actually a good attack. Uh, it's under curve, but it does five damage and it has after she dips two, so it beats slower things by getting out of the way. So it's mid speed. If you ex it, it's six damage on curve that still jumps the way of slow things, so it's just kind of free. The problem with that is that it has Bison Dollars on it, which is one of the freest boosts around. It's just like, oh, I draw three cards, that's gauge, drop them a turn. Great. Like, the, the, the Econ boost, most boosts that are like this are Ultra boosts, where it's like you play an Ultra boost and you draw four cards. This is a special. And the attack it's on is pretty situational. Like, most of the time that you want to play this attack, you can just play Cross and it's better. Um, you, the nice thing about this is that if you're in the corner, you can critical, advance out of the corner, and then retreat with the effects. Like, that's the actual usage of this, is to go, oh, I'm cornered in there playing a focus or a sweep. Get out of dodge. Bison Dollars is so, so good. Uh, so, to me, this is like the second tiering. People say good things about this card. Um, I'm not really impressed. Like, again, it's 6 damage at speed 5. He's good at dealing 6 damage. He likes dealing 6 damage. You can tell this, right? Like, 5-6 damage is kind of what he does on all the specials. Well, for the most part. Um, but quick backdash, though. Quick backdash is actually exceptional, because this goes... Ah, my opponent moved into range 1, because the, I'm winning this boost war. Well, now I'm at range 3, and I'm going to strike with whatever they don't want to deal with. And uh, it's also occasionally useful for getting out of trouble if you need to not be at range 1 for defensive reasons, but usually I find this is like, oh, you tried to escape my pressure, no good. Back out we go. Uh, it's really, really good at that. So like this boost in particular, I value. The attack, not so much. The attack say you occasionally wild swing it in response to a grasp and you're happy. Other than that, I don't know. I don't do much with it. Nightmare Booster. Alright, so Nightmare Booster is kind of interesting because this attack is unbeatable if played properly. But it's also three or 
four gauge, or three, or three gauge and a boost, right? And one four special boost. For just six damage. Which is super underwhelming. Like, this does not impress me. Um, I always prefer to boost this card, personally. Uh, and if you're shy about revealing your hands, try to play things that will get rid of the resources. Or just play a bunch of attacks so that your hand is almost empty and then play Psycho Booster. Uh, to just show your hand that doesn't have anything in it or hardly anything. And remember, try to get rid of normals before you do this, right? Like, don't show a hand that has full of normals if the opponent is still threatening to have reading. But, like, this accelerates his engine massively. And Bison, so Bison is a boss character archetype. And what that means generally is that he doesn't interact with resources like anybody else. What? Okay. Which you can see by the fact that he just goes, hmm, I have gauge now. Like, nobody else does that. Well, nobody else in Street Fighter does that. Um, there's characters throughout the seasons that are boss fighters or are gauge characters or gauge monsters or whatever. But, like, Bison doesn't really ever have to worry about having gauge. He can just have it. The catch is that he's going to burn information by filling his discard pile if he's not using cards right, steadily. And he takes time. Boss characters tend to take a lot of actions to do the things that they want to do. Chat development trivia. Which two cards in Imogene's kit used to have their art slots? Uh, yeah, so... It was... If I recall correctly, it's been a while now. But, like, theoretically I should remember, because I was the one who argued for it. Holy Warding and Guilty Pan. Uh, this was supposed to be Holy Warding. This was supposed to be Guilty Pan in terms of the, which artwork was which. I thought this was confusing and argued to have them switched. If you think it made more sense the other way, sorry, blame me. Um, oh, and they missed it on the reference card, so that is directly my fault. Alright. Uh, Bison. Do I value his flip? His flip is... Oh, I've got these normals in hand that my opponent knows about. I need to change cards three. Well, why not? Like, that's basically the only time I'll do it. Other than that, it's not worth the expenditure. Like, because you, you spent that many turns to get that much gauge, right? Like, you, you probably spent three turns, or you boosted this once to get that three gauge. Well, if you spent it on the flip, you have to burn that many more cards which is that much more information that your opponent has about what capabilities you no longer possess, right? And you go through your deck faster, which means that you're more susceptible to reading. Bison has to care an awful lot about what information he leaves up for his opponent. And I find this to usually make you more susceptible unless you're using it specifically to get rid of that information. Um, even then, like, even then, I'm not sure I like it. But yeah. So... Hammer Rooster as an attack, I actually think, is, like, very mid-range. It's very answery because it doesn't do much by itself, but it also says you're not doing anything back to me. And it does give you advantage, which is nice, but I value this boost much, much more highly. Like, that's probably my lineup of Bison's, excuse me, you know, most to least uh, power budget. Alright, 